Hi there, Derek here from Pacific Coast Auto and welcome to another Japan auction purchase walk around. Today, like so many of the other videos that we've been doing recently, is a Nissan Skyline GTR R32. This one, like the rest of them, is going to the USA. So we'll take a look at the condition of it. This one's a little bit interesting. Actually, let me get away from the big forklift over there so you can hear me. This one's a little bit interesting because this is a, a lower grade car than we would usually buy. And actually, we get a lot of inquiries for kind of a skyline at a budget. And so this is about what you're going to get if you're looking for a car that's going to be kind of the cheaper side of things and needs a little bit of a fixer up. This car here is uh, most likely going to be used as a race car from what I understand and so the condition of the car was intentionally purchased a little bit lower grade so that uh, we could get it for a cheaper price. It does have some good parts on it and a couple of uh, interesting things that are worth looking at. I'm going to go over the auction sheet and the rest of the condition of the body so that we can compare how this, how this compares to the vehicle's uh, auction sheet. So it's a 1990 with an auction grade 3 and 121 100 kilometers. The engine seems to be running really well. The body and the interior are kind of below average. So let's take a look at that. Of course, RB26 engine. This one comes with a really interesting Veil Side Evolution R cam cover on it. Now, I don't know if they changed the cam covers to that just because they like the look of it or if there actually are some uh, internal engine modifications. A lot of the tuning companies will put on a special cam cover for their company if they do the tuning for it as part of their engine build kit. Now the auction sheet here doesn't say that the internals have been changed but it's happened quite a few times where we bought a car and it turns out to be more powerful than we thought. There was one Supra that we bought that turned out to have 450 wheel horsepower. And so that's a surprise when that happens. Right over there is picking up containers. So it's really noisy. Okay, so let's see what we can see in here. We've got Greddy piping kit here with mushroom filters, which in Japanese is actually called mushroom filter, kinoko filter. No rust around here. We've got adjustable suspension on there. Good to see no rust, good for a nice strong chassis. It's got a above average looking strut tower bar there. We have Cusco oil catch tank and of course front mount intercooler in there. This one's an aftermarket, uh, most likely Gretti or Trust which is the same brand but a, I guess a sub brand of it. I don't really know how that works. Not much else to say inside here. I guess uh, the intake manifold doesn't have any paint on it, which means the intake manifold has been taken off one, at one point and they took all of the paint off of that uh, with like a wire brush or something. Oil and the coolant look fine. Mechanically, the car looks to be in quite good condition. These engines are always really noisy, and so if you're one of those guys who posts in the comments saying that engine sounds like a diesel or it's going to break soon, you probably don't know what you're talking about. Uh, we have lots of these Skylines, one, two, and we have like six or seven more over there. And uh, yeah, they just sound really bad because they're noisy engines. Okay, now if you rev it like that, right at the end, you get a little bit of stumbling in the engine. Probably the engine needs to be tuned a little bit, maybe plugs, maybe coils. R32 coils, like I've mentioned in a lot of my other videos, uh, they don't last as long as the car does. They usually start to bum out around 10 years old, actually. And then uh, they just break over time slowly, so you don't really notice it until you replace them. And then you're like, wow, this is so much better than I thought that it was. Okay, so we'll take a look at the body. First, we'll go over the auction sheet. Now, it's raining today, and I don't like to see the cars in the rain because you can't see them in very good detail. But we kind of have to because we have too many cars and we can't control the weather. So, 1990 Skyline GTR. This one has a modified chassis. It's a grade three with an interior grade C, 121, 100 kilometers. Modified chassis means that the car either didn't pass emissions or they did some sort of modification to the car that needs to be registered. 
So it can be various different things. If, uh, sometimes they say why it's been modified. Um, We'll see. It says metal turbo on it. And so the stock turbos on this car are ceramic. Uh, the metal turbo could be an N1. They don't mention what it is. The size of the turbo itself looks to be stock. So probably an N1 turbo, which is uh, good for a strong street car or a race car that is actually going to be used for racing, not like one of those 1,000 horsepower cars that isn't good for racing. Only good for proving to your friends that you've got horsepower. So front mount intercooler, aftermarket 17 inch wheels. I'm not actually familiar with these wheels, but they look really nice. The amount of dish that is on the inside here, uh, I guess in real life looks better than in pictures or the video would. I think that they look really smart. Okay, lowered car on adjustable coilovers. Cusco oil catch tank, veil side exhaust, aftermarket clutch, a trust air filter, and some various other aftermarket parts the seller doesn't know. It says electric folding mirrors don't work. Mufflers dented. Dashboard has screw holes and a part comes up, and that's really common on the R32s. So I'll show you in a sec the part of the dashboard that comes up. Rear spoiler paint fade, interior dirty, scratched, rip, and part comes up. Wheels scratched, core support dented. And core support is this front piece that goes across here. When it says dented, it's usually less than about one centimeter. Uh, and is caused by an accident. A grade three can be a very small accident, and that's why this one was graded three. Otherwise, it might be a 3.5. Okay, left side step jack up point dented, and the inner side of that member is, is bent or dented. Floor side member dented, small scratches, small dents, shallow scratches, repair marks. Okay, aftermarket wheels, steering wheel, roll cage, gauges, and shift knob. And if you look at the body here, this is probably where the, the biggest weakness is. Front bumper has a lot of uneven paint and big scratches. Now, if you don't know what this means, it's all on our website. Uh, there's a U2 on the left side here, that's a large dent. Screw holes in the back here. Paint cracked on the rear right fender. And an S2, which is kind of a medium size rust. A W2 means it's been repainted. Okay, so let's take a look at the body here. Now, pardon me, we are locked in here. We can't get out. I mean, probably we could get out here where my car is parked, but the car had a dead battery and I needed to boost it. And so my car is stuck there. And we're going to do our walk around in here. I prefer to get a lot more space than this to do the walk around, but Today I'm in a little bit of a hurry because we've got so many cars and not enough time to see them all. So, so a lot of people don't put body kits on their R32. Not compared to cars like the Silvia or the Chaser. I think part of that is the fact that the R32 is more of a car that people buy for the performance of it, not for the show of it. That's just my take on it. So some bad paint here. It's been painted with some spray paint to kind of fix the things, and that's what the uneven paint means. Front lip is in really terrible condition. Intercooler has some mild denting on the bottom here, but there are no leaks as far as I can tell some bad paint here as well. And this is the Nismo front bumper, because it's got the ducts there that feed the intercooler. Really bad paint and some scuffs in here. Remember, this is an A3, which is the largest size scratches that you can get. Of course, aluminum hood and front fenders are in good shape. The body panels, the body panels are a strong point in this car. They seem to be really good with not very many dents or scratches in them. Really just the bumpers, the plastic parts. Uh, rear wing is really rough, side skirt. Okay, these side skirts are the Nismo racing homologation version. They don't come on very well right here. They were originally white. They never came on, I guess, this car. And so rock chips have deteriorated them. What's nice about these Nismo side skirts is these are authentic racing pieces. When Nismo wanted, or Nissan wanted to take this car racing, then 
they needed to have at least 500 units sold with homologation parts. And the N1 turbo, the metal turbo, is one of those pieces. But the other pieces that they needed to put on were all exclusively so that they could do better in racing. So these are actual functional side skirts that make a difference. The same thing with the uh, Nismo rear spats here. Uh, pardon me, these ones are not. They look like they were put on at the same time, but they do not match the Nismo sides. And the Nismo has another rear wing that goes underneath here and does make a difference. But this one has had it on and then had it taken off. So it leaves the four holes here and the rear wing is really in junk condition. Now keep in mind that uh, the auction sheet said there was S2 on the back fender. Let's take a look at that. So right here, it looks like there was some uh, a hit here in the back and it was fixed with some uh, body filler and then that body filler over time cracked and just eventually crack, 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 crack and the rust came out from underneath. There are some uh, cracks in the paint up here, 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 here. And this whole fender is, well, I would consider that pretty bad damage. Okay. Tires here are a 225 40 ZR17, so high speed rating, and they are toast. These tires have been used for racing. You can tell they're pretty much a racing slick at this point. Uh, they do have the max load ratings, and so they're, I guess they would be legal otherwise. They're a 2010 tire. I guess talking about the tires doesn't do much good when they're bad tires anyway. Okay, starting to get some cracking in here. Peeling here on the rear window. Rear wiper has been removed. Mega row maintenance service. Hmm. It's funny they have a, a baby in car for a racing car. Same thing here. And you've got this ribbing here, which is on a lot of these Skyline GTRs. I'd like to know if it's possible to open up the door and pull that and attach it on again. You might be able to do that. I don't know. Okay, let's take a look inside the car now. So the car's been fitted with a roll cage and a steering wheel that would be used for racing. It's closer to the driver than would be comfortable for a street car. Roll cage is bolted in. One, two, three, four points. And also has the areas for cross members. It came with um, a full bucket seat for racing, which we can send to you if you want. Driver's seat is in fair condition. It's got the very common uh, coming up pieces here. Looks like this piece can be taken out and re-sewn in if you wanted to replace that. That's really the biggest place that it wears is here, and then they tend to rip here from, I guess, abrasion. Power steering seems to work good. Clutch seems to work good, but we can't drive the car, so can't know for sure. It's actually nice that the rain stopped a little bit. It was raining really heavily. Uh, initial D style, cup holders on the vents. One, two, three screw holes there and dashboard part coming up and vent is broken. And what happens is when the dashboard comes up, it squeezes the vent and cracks it. It's really common for that vent and these ones to break. And they're actually kind of expensive pieces because so many of them are broken and these cars are 25 years old now. Okay, passenger seat is super dirty, otherwise in good condition. I don't know, the interior is not bad. That's on almost all the skylines and broken vents is almost on almost all the skylines. And so considering this one is a below average costing car, it's not too bad, I guess. It's funny to see lots of wear there in the passenger side. I guess this guy was, uh, had lots of friends who wore golf shoes in their cars. Extra gauges there for turbo and water temp. Car's idling fine now. Like so many of these GTRs, it feels like it could use a nice tune-up. And a lot of the people who buy these cars from us, they say we changed the plugs and we changed the coils and it runs so well now. And so that's, uh, I think that that's a common thing for these cars from what I've seen. Open up the trunk and take a look in there. We're at 14 minutes for this video already. Probably wrap up pretty soon. Ah, in the trunk we get braces. That's cool. 
So you can choose passengers or no passengers. And you got some other parts in here. We will take these parts back to the office and let you know there's original seat belts in here. Uh, I can't tell what it is without opening the package. A bag of goodies. And this wasn't marked on the auction sheet, so it's kind of neat to see that. There's no spare tire in here by the looks of it. Got some uh, brake pads that are used. NGK brake pads. I don't know. Well, let's see if there is any. Ah, Cusco Strut Tower bar in the back. And it looks like having no spare tire and putting heavy things in the trunk was not a fun thing for... Oh, let's see if we can do this. There we go. For your cardboard. Oh, wow. Lots of stuff. There's even a candy bottle, cigarettes, Skyline manual, bag, cans of stuff. Hmm. Doesn't look like any rust in there from what I can see, but I I don't have enough arms to... Yeah, we got a little bit. Weird. It doesn't look like it's terrible. Uh, iPhone connector, sunglasses, yeah. Lots of junk. That's funny that he kept it all underneath his carpet. That's not something that I've seen before. Kind of weird. All right, I'll do this while I'm not on camera. Okay, so that's going to be it for this Skyline R32 GTR. And you might see this car on a racetrack near you, or maybe not near you. Okay, so that's going to be it for the video. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for checking out our channel and commenting if you want and all of that stuff. Thanks a lot and have a good day.